Hello everyone, so today we are going to start with uh, session number 6, one of my favorite session. Uh, it is going to be on uh, actual technicality, art of breastfeeding. Uh, you know we all know, everybody knows that uh, breastfeeding is important, everybody knows actually. And it is not that mothers do not try, they do try. Okay. Uh, and I have this experience in US, I have this experience in India uh, with the educated mothers, with the, you know, mothers coming from underprivileged background. Uh, they all want to breastfeed their children by and large. Uh, but the problem arises when they try to breastfeed and when they are unsuccessful, when they kind of develop nipple pain, breast pain, breast abscess, baby is not latching, you know, baby is crying. Uh, mothers, they do try. And when they feel that they are not uh, being able to breastfeed, that is when you know things starts uh, kind of falling apart. And uh, that is what uh, kind of I experienced too in, in my own experience. And also when I started working in uh, you know slums of Mumbai, uh, of course as a pediatrician I was not taught about breastfeeding at all uh, even in US. You know, uh, and initially, like I would kind of teach mothers whatever that I knew, uh, and also reading a lot of uh, books and guidelines, and you know, and uh, somehow you know, kind of children were not gaining as much weight. And uh, working in with this uh, poor mothers, it was very important for me to uh, make them understand proper technicality of breastfeeding, so that we could do catch up growth because a lot of these babies were born small. You know, in India, as I mentioned, our uh, average birth weight is 2.7, which is, uh, you know, which is much lower than the world average of 3.2, 3.3 kgs in girls and boys respectively. Uh, so we, de we did kind of, uh, you know, uh, worked on uh, different techniques of breastfeeding. As I mentioned, initially what we were doing, we were using the cradle hold and somehow I felt a lot of uh, kind of uh, problems with that cradle hold. Uh, and of course, you know, we, we were using this amazing uh, software which we had uh, created with the help, help of uh, one of the uh, very famous uh, software company. So, what we were doing, whatever we were telling mothers, we were documented it uh, on that software and we realized that uh, some advices when we gave, it was working, some of, uh, some of the advices we gave, it was not working. You know, and uh, I have to tell you this uh, one particular experience that I had uh, almost uh, four to five years in my uh, uh, learning. Uh, I had this one baby come to me, about two weeks old girl child. And uh, you know, I met this mother, in fact, she lived in my uh, building and she was, she looked kind of very uh, tired and she looked sad and she had this little baby in her hand. So I told her uh, that uh, how is it going with you breastfeeding? I had never met her before, this was the first time that I met her. And she, uh, she said that, uh, ma'am, you know, uh, I'm not able to breastfeed her. She cries a lot. She just doesn't latch on to the breast. And uh, I'm basically starting formula. So I said, no, before you start formula, why don't you come home and I can help you. And uh, in fact, within just 30 minutes, she came home with her little baby, two weeks old baby, uh, you know, full term baby born beautifully three kilogram weight, uh, you know, at birth. And uh, she came and, you know, we were, I was showing her the cradle hold, the traditional hold that, uh, you know, we generally use. Cradle hold is basically, you know, you just basically uh, put the baby on the same side that you want to breastfeed from and you, you know, this is cradle hold and traditionally most of the people use this cradle hold. So I told her, I said, why don't you, uh, you know, hold the baby this way exactly how, you know, uh, it's written everywhere. Uh, and you know, uh, when she was trying to breastfeed, baby refused to latch, refused to latch. We tried half an hour, we, we to, I told her exactly C-shape hold, you know, do this, do that and baby refused to latch. 
And then uh, we were almost in tears actually, you know, working on this for 5 years. And then when she tried to, then I told mother, I said that, look, what we can do, you hold the baby and I will try to direct breast in the mouth. So, you know, I will try to hold the breast and I will basically kind of uh, contour it in a way so it becomes easier for baby to latch on. So while she was holding it, you know, uh, so normally we were told the C shape just just by intuition or just by sixth sense, you know, uh, I, when baby opened the mouth, you know, immediately instead of doing a C shape, I just held up because I was looking from, from top, you know, and I held the breast from top and I pressed it. As soon as I did that, baby kind of latched on, you know, beautifully. And I was like, for a second, I thought that I made a mistake because normally I would, I would tell mothers, no, no, do C shape, C shape hold. And here, I, as soon as baby opened the mouth, I did the U shape, you know, from the top. And uh, I, I immediately went on the internet because it was like a aha moment. And I went through so many uh, kind of YouTube videos and, you know, nowhere it, it showed U shape. Everybody was doing traditional hold and this and that. But I came across one uh, video where uh, one of the nurse, uh, in fact, she was a neonatologist from Stanford University, you know, and she was showing mothers uh, kind of cross cradle hold with uh, holding the breast in the U shape, not from the top, but from the bottom. And I, it just, I said, it occurred to me that what was happening is that when baby was opening the mouth, you know, what, I, what uh, basically I had to do is to put my fingers parallel to baby's lips so it could contour and it was easy for baby to latch on, you know, and baby immediately kept quiet, started sucking and, you know, and that's how basically this uh, uh, different holding of breast and also uh, way to hold the baby also kind of uh, we learned over a period of time and that's when we started seeing uh, good results. and. Since then, you know, uh, our weight gain has been remarkable, almost 1.1 to 1.2. In fact, sometimes we see uh, 1.5 to 1.6 kg weight gain per month, you know. So this was my little story that how, uh, you know, we came, uh, we started kind of uh, improvising this cross cradle technique, you know, the cross cradle means you hold the baby from the opposite end, you know, opposite hand and uh, you latch the baby on. So that's what I'm going to explain. And again, over a period of time, you know, uh, we figured out at what points which were very, very important for mothers to understand. And once we taught those uh, techniques as well as those counseling points, you know, uh, we started seeing results, okay. So today my first uh, part is going to be basically, uh, you know, uh, just 45 points of counseling, which is one of the most important aspect of this, uh, you know, tutorial of this uh, session. Uh, and of course, the whole course. So if you can really understand the technicality of uh, cross cradle hole in 45 points, you know, 90% of your problems will be solved you know, 90% of the time, okay. So, do kind of uh, listen to this very carefully, watch it and then uh, practically you can just buy a doll and make a breast model at home and you can, uh, you know, practice it uh, on, on the, of course, the, the model. But, you know, also kind of help any mothers in your uh, family who, who are just delivered or teach any pregnant mothers, you know, when the baby is born, you practice on mother and the baby because more you practice uh, uh, on a live baby and the mother, uh, more ef uh, efficient you will become, okay. So let us start with the uh, you know, first point. Uh, of course, this is part 1 and we are going to talk about, I uh, will be including part 1, part 2, part 3, you know, it is basically a continuous process uh, and I will make it as elaborate as possible and also as simple as possible, okay. So let us start with cross cradle hold and 45 points of counselling, okay. Now, first thing that we want to remember, you know, we, we are always, we have this thing in our mind that when is baby ready to breastfeed, okay. And uh, most of the time mothers feel that, oh, when baby cries, that's when uh, baby is ready to breastfeed. Uh, one point you want to remember, why by the time baby cries, it's already too late, okay. So please do not wait for baby to cry. Okay, you what you can do is to understand those early hunger cues. Okay, so early hunger cues. So what are those early hunger cues in uh, you know newborn babies or babies who are small, you know, two months uh, under two months of age? Is basically you know they will first thing they'll do is they'll open their eyes, and they will kind of squirm. So they will kind of squirm. 
ok. And they will start looking around, they will start looking for breasts, so they will open them out and then they will move around like this ok, so that is important. Uh, second or third point would be basically you know what they do is that uh, in mid hunger queue they put their hand in the mouth. So, they will put them hand in the mouth ok and they will basically kind of salivate and they will become little bit more kind of uh, squirmish. So, they move a lot ok. Third stage they become very irritable, they become it is a late queue and they become very irritable, they start crying and they are very very you know it is very difficult to console them ok. So, when do you want to breastfeed? You want to breastfeed when they are uh, in early hunger cues. So, in early hunger cues again they will start squirming ok, they will open their mouth and they will start looking for breast. So, that is what is the most important early hunger cues that you want to understand ok. So, here now you have a baby who is small and suppose baby does not wake up uh, say within 2 hours or so ok. Now, again if the baby is small and you know uh, you want to have a catch up growth then I do recommend that uh, you should basically wake up the baby after 2 hours gap in the daytime. Okay. So, the way you wake up the baby is basically you remove pretty much all those blankets, you know you remove cap, you remove mittens, you remove socks because when the baby is wrapped too many times they are too comfortable and sometimes they just do not want to wake up. Okay. So, once you remove all that extra clothing uh, you know uh, baby does get kind of uncomfortable and then they, they wake up. Okay. Second thing what you want to do, uh, suppose if they are not waking up, okay, even if you remove uh, all the clothes just with one on C, you can keep that on C on. If it is cold obviously you can put uh, one more layer, you know, but do not put too many blankets around the baby okay, when you are waking up the baby. Second thing what you want to do is to basically make, up, make the baby sit. So, what you can do, you, you make the baby sit on the lap, okay, put your uh, fingers on the jaw, so there is an angle of the jaw, so here is the angle ok. So, you basically uh, put the jaw, uh, put the uh, hand around the jaw ok, it should not be on the neck, it should be on the jaw ok and then and your wrist is basically resting on the chest. So, the whole body basically the body is resting on the on the on your palm ok and the other hand is just basically behind the back of the baby ok. So, and then you just kind of uh, tilt the baby little bit forward ok, when you tilt the baby little bit forward what happens the stomach get uh, pressed. So, here in this position ok, so this is a perfect position to wake up the baby. Now, I like this position a lot even for burping the baby ok, because in, uh, in US also in our unit we used to burp the baby, when small babies we used to burp the baby like this. So, remember to kind of make the baby sit. See here, do you see how baby is kind of bent forward little bit? You do not need to pat the baby or you do not need to move your hand, you know just kind of uh, support uh, back like this ok and in front it should be like this. Do not hold it too close, just it should be just uh, kind of uh, near ears ok. So, I am holding it near the ears not on the neck. You do not want to put your fingers on the neck because what happens is in the neck uh, you have uh, arm. So, you do not want to press your neck baby's neck you know that it will cause problem ok. So, just on the, on the jaw on the on the mandible this is a bone called mandible. So, you want to touch near the mandible ok. So, now if baby is hungry baby will immediately wake up. The first thing baby does when you put them in a sitting position they open their eyes. So, they open their eyes wide wide open ok and then you kind of stimulate a little bit and that is when baby kind of uh, is ready to breastfeed. Make sure that you do not put the baby on the breast because baby is sleepy. If baby is sleepy they will just go back to sleep ok. So, if baby is not waking up just put the baby back and again you can try and within a half an hour or so. Now, at night I do recommend that baby should uh, be breastfed at least 3 to 4 times. Now, at night if baby is not waking up after 3 hours then I would wake up the baby uh, at around say at the end of 3 hours you know because you do not want to go too long because then again you know I see that babies do not then put on good amount of weight ok. So, that is one important point that I want to discuss. So, now, now mothers preparation ok. Now, what is mothers preparation? So, before basically kind of uh, holding the baby or touching the baby what mother needs to do is to wash her hands really really important because you know 
uh, kind of mother has touched so many surfaces, you know mother has probably uh, changed a diaper, mother has done so many other things, you want to make sure that she has clean hands before she touches the baby, okay. So even before she picks up the baby, you know, under, I mean remember I, I talked about the early hunger cues so that mother, this is just the thought process that mother is going through. So this was the thought process that I mentioned that she should know when to start feeding the baby. So if she feels this is a time to feed the baby, to wake up the baby or baby squirming, the first thing she does is wash her hands. So before she touches the baby, tell her to wash her hands with soap and water, okay. Little bit warm water if she has access to warm water that would be great. If she does not have warm uh, access to warm water then it is fine too. So use soap and water, wash her hands, okay and then tell her to drink uh, one glass of water, okay. So that is about uh, 8 ounces, 240-250 ml of water. Now this water has to be clean. Okay. So, if you have access to filter water, of course, that is the most preferable one. But if you do not have filter water, what you can do is to just kind of tell mother to boil water and then just uh, you know keep it at a room temperature and then so boil in kind of room temperature water that she should have it immediately before breastfeeding. Now why this is important? Because uh, as you know that you know uh, mothers get very busy. Okay, uh, and when she has a small baby, she has to feed every hour and a half, two hours, you know, then she may have to do some work uh, at home, she may have other children, you know, long time what happens, she forgets to take care of herself. And here in this uh, situation, when she is probably getting, you know, 750 to 850 ml of milk and sometime if baby is catching up, then they, she will get even 1 to 1 and half liter of milk, you know. So if the latch is good, she, you know, the weight gain is so good that uh, definitely mother uh, gets more than 1 litre of milk and if you have twins then she will probably get 1 and half litres of milk you know. So in that scenario even with single ton baby I do recommend that mother should sit down relax and drink some water because if she drinks her water what it is going to do is she it is going to relax her plus it will hydrate her. Because as I mentioned, they get so kind of worked up that they forget to drink water, they forget to eat, uh, you know, of their food, you know, mothers, they get mad, really. Uh, new mothers, you know, even worse. So just make sure that, you know, you mention to her, uh, kind of counsel her, relax, drink water, one glass of water, take a deep breath, you know, think about good things because it oxytocin rela uh, release, you know, this is the hormone which releases your, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of milk uh, from breast, you know, it releases milk, right? So that for release of it's called letdown reflex. So that letdown reflex, uh, you need a hormone called oxytocin. Okay, oxytocin is also called love hormone. Okay, and you need to have that relaxation. That's when mother will feel loved. She will have this, you know, kind of uh, motherly feeling, and immediately she will relax, and the milk will come out. Okay, so for that also, I recommend just tell her to tell her to relax, think of some good things, think of, you know, if she wants, she can listen to some light music if she has access to or, you know, kind of do not be on phone, keep that TV away, you know, not all those uh, lot of activity ar around uh, surrounding her, okay. So there we are, now she drank water, okay. Now what she has to do, she has to basically pick up the baby. So if she, suppose baby is uh, sleeping on the bed, okay. Uh, of course, I do recommend that if mother can sleep on the floor with the baby that would be great because a lot of time when the baby is sleeping on the bed, there is a risk of rolling rolling down, you know. So I, I personally do recommend that, you know, when the baby is small, it is better to kind of be on, uh, on the floor on the bed, much better. So now she is sitting down, okay. She has a baby next to her. So first thing, and obviously baby is right there, so she does not need to walk and get the baby. But if baby say in the crib or say in the jula, she will have to bring the baby, okay. She will have to kind of put the baby next to her while she is preparing to breastfeed, okay. But remember she has to touch the baby only while after washing her hands and drinking some water, okay. So now here I have got the baby out of jula and I am ready to breastfeed on my bed, okay. So I am going to put the baby in front of me okay and I am going to prepare myself. The way I am going to prepare myself is first I am going to find a comfortable position to sit okay. So if it is a bed then I can sit on the bed. I have to make sure that I have a pillow behind my back 
ok. Uh, if I do not have a pillow at least I need to have a wall or a kind of a, you know a board of the bed where I can rest. Pillow will be great because that will kind of give me comfort on my back ok. Uh, say for example, I am a mother. So, and then mother, another thing what I want to do is I want to kind of relax. Uh, kind of fold my uh, you know legs. Uh, if I am sitting on the chair then I can put my legs down, but I want to make sure there is a support on my under my feet ok, because the feet needs to be supported. If it is dangling in the air it could be very uncomfortable for the mother. So, make sure that we have a support under the under the feet ok. So, here now I am ready to breastfeed, here I am sitting down with my legs folded with back supported, back straight very important that you keep your back straight, it should not be drooping down or it should not be very kind of stressed you know just relax ok and then uh, just prepare yourself ok. Now, next point would be to uh, open the uh, clothes ok. So, one thing which is very very crucial most of the mothers that we see they have this habit of wearing bra and uh, shirt which are basically uh, not front open lot of time you know they wear a kurti, but then they just lift up the kurti and lift up the uh, bra. So, what happens like for example, I am going to show you on this uh, breast model. So, here is the breast model and what is happening is mother is kind of lifting up the bra. So, now that tight bra is sitting on the breast ok, it is basically kind of denting on the breast. What is happening when you have something which is pressing on the breast? So, here we have basically kind of uh, uh, you know milk is formed in the alveoli over here and then milk is kind of flowing out or kind of getting collected in the collecting duct ok. So, when you have a something pressing on the collecting duct, duct means like a canal where the milk is coming out ok. Uh, and if something is pressing on the duct what will happen the milk will form, but it is not flowing out. So, now the milk will continue to form in that uh, kind of round uh, you know cells I mean uh, I am not going to use too many of this milk terms because I know uh, many of you are not uh, uh, medical doctors or you know nurses. So, again you know when the milk is forming and, it, and that milk flow does not have a proper kind of a way to come out uh, then milk will continue to form and then it will become bigger and bigger and that area will become inflamed it will become red because the milk is not flowing out it is just collecting in one space ok. Now, what will happen mother will kind of feel the uh, swelling in the breast and then if suppose that swelling is not relieved then what will happen uh, eventually the infection will set in. Once the infection sets in then they develop uh, breast abscess and once the breast abscess develops then you know obviously she has to go to surgeon, surgeon will kind of cut the you know, you know abscess, remove uh, you know pass from it and it becomes so painful and many times then mother stop breastfeeding on that side ok. So, this is another very important point uh, and our, our 45 points we have created this is so that to prevent any complications in the future ok. So, this is another important point is to tell mothers that not to press anything on the breast it should not there should not be any tight clothing, there should not be any to a tight bra. If she wants to breastfeed tell her to buy clothes which has buttons till, till the navel and she has to remove each and every button ok and then basically make sure that she does not wear bra if possible, but if she even wear bra she if she wears bra then she can just remove the button and keep it completely open at least till while she is breastfeeding you know at that for for say 30 minutes 40 minutes when she is breastfeeding tell her to just remove it is much easier to do that ok then she she won't develop any of this complication ok. So, now she is prepared she's she's removed her breast uh, you know she's opened her breast uh, nothing is pressing on the breast now she's going to take the baby okay so here it is that here she's going to take the baby okay and then she's going to uh, you know kind of remove all the clothes and just keep one on C or just one pair of clothes if it's cold then of course second layer is fine cap is also okay but i prefer that while mother is latching the baby at least while she's learning how to latch you know remove the cap because it will be much easier for her to uh, you know to kind of hold the baby and, and learn how to latch the baby or how to position the baby ok. So, that is that is really important. So, uh, again 
can remove all the blankets, remove cap, you know, and then wake up the baby by putting the baby in a uh, in a sitting position, you know, kind of uh, hold it, uh, uh, you know, little bit forward, and then now she's ready. So now what she's going to do? So here is the baby. I'm going to first thing what I'm going to do. Now remember that baby uh, does not have neck control in first two months of age. Okay, so she will have to continue holding the head. Okay, so that she baby does not have a wobbly neck. Okay, so here now what she's going to do? She's going to basically hold the baby from the back. Okay, and then here she's going to support. Okay, uh, with her uh, with her elbow joint, and immediately hold it like this. Okay, now I'm going to discuss this. This is called positioning of the baby because mother is now ready to breastfeed. Okay, so mother's preparation is done. Now what she's doing, she is now positioning the baby because this is the this is very important uh, aspect because here now what we're doing, we are landing the baby to be ready to breastfed. So this is called landing the baby, also called positioning of the baby. Okay, so now this is the cross cradle hold. In cross cradle hold, what happens? Suppose I'm going to breastfeed from left side. Okay. That means this hand is going to be open, okay. But I'm going to hold the baby with the opposite hand. This is called cross cradle. So the the hand which is in cross to that breast that I'm going to breastfeed from, I'm holding the baby from that side. That's why it's called cross cradle. So now first thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this baby's legs under my armpit. It should be really kind of embedded. Make sure that it is held tight because a lot of time what happens if, if it is not uh, held tight what happens baby keeps slipping. When baby keeps slipping then it becomes very difficult for baby to latch on just by mouth. Okay? So to have a good latch, latch means mooki pakar, it is like you know holding the uh, breast with the mouth. Okay? So for that to have a good holding of breast by baby's mouth, you want to have a perfect position. If there is a perfect position, it would be very easy for mother to latch the baby, it will be very easy for baby to uh, get the milk transfer. Okay? So first thing you want to do is you lift the legs up under the armpit. Okay, and you basically what you can do is to put baby's hip little bit on elbow joint. So this is what you want to do is put the elbow joint just at the angle of the elbow. Okay, so here this is ready and make sure that both the legs are uh, held properly. Now look at the position of baby. Okay, now position the baby is absolutely horizontal. Do you see this is absolutely horizontal. Lot of time when I see mothers they do this. Now this is this is not horizontal. This is diagonal. So you don't want a diagonal, uh, you know, baby. You want to have absolutely horizontal position. Okay. Here, what I'm go doing now. Look at this. Now, there are four important points of positioning. Remember that it's WHO for positioning point. One is that baby should be in a straight line. So do you see baby is completely in a straight line? What do you mean straight line? Straight line means the neck. I mean the, the ears, so here is your ears, okay, here is your ears, then your shoulder and your hip, they all are in the straight line. So here in this, in this position, you know, suppose this is a straight baby, okay, this is a straight baby. So here in straight baby, what is happening, ears, shoulder joint and your hip joint is in the straight line, okay. So exactly when I put this baby like this, so same thing, uh, ears, shoulder joint, Okay, this is a shoulder joint and your hip joint in the straight line. So this is what I mean by straight line. Okay, many times what happens? Babies are put like this. Now imagine you're eating food, and if you're putting your uh, head sideways and you're eating, you will not be able to swallow. You'll not be able to eat. But when you see many mothers, they they breastfeed the baby like this. So the the uh, shoulders are on the side. So the position is like this, ears are in front, okay, shoulders on the side and the hip is on the side and this is how so many mothers breastfeed. So if you now look at any mother, immediately you should look at it whether, whether it is in the straight line or not, okay. So this is how many mothers breastfeed, it is so common. And that's why so many mothers, they can't even, uh, babies can't even breastfeed, it's like we cannot eat like this sideways, okay, we have to keep our body straight. Similarly, same thing happens. So you make sure that baby is in straight line, 
So, here baby is in straight line now ok and if I bend it backward there you go. So, this is the straight line of uh, baby's body ok. One more time ears, shoulder joint and your hip joint straight line ok. Alright, now what is happening? So, now baby is in a straight line, now there should be full body support ok. Imagine while you are eating, imagine that you are eating, adults are eating and you are hanging in the air. You will not be able to swallow, you will not be able to it will be you know it is kind of a very scary situation where you do not have support right. What support do we have? We have gravity support right. So, when you have a gravity support basically you uh, sit uh, you know you have you can sit properly and you can eat well right. Similarly, here babies against the gravity means if you do not hold the baby, baby will immediately fall right. So, in this position you want to make sure that you hold the baby full body support is extremely important ok. So, what you can do full body support look the legs are supported right, the hip is supported right and back is supported with my hand and the neck you know neck just a back part of the head is supported also right. So, this is important that uh, keep the body full body support is extremely important ok alright. So, that is your second point. So, uh, one more point uh, in positioning is like when you bring the baby uh, you know to the breast ok. So, we already spoke about a straight line you know uh, tummy to tummy or chest to chest and then nose to nipple I would say neck to nipple. Uh, one more thing you want to make sure that many times mother has this habit of uh, kind of drooping forward ok. So, kind of tell mother not to uh, bend forward you know lot of time what happens is baby is in uh, kind of on the pillow and she is bending forward. What she has to do? She has to sit straight and bring baby up ok. So, that is important that is to bring baby up do not droop down, do not uh, kind of stoop down ok. Second thing is um, when you are holding the baby, this way you hold the baby from head is very important. Many times what mothers do, they hold the baby like this. This is not the way to hold because what happens when you press the head like this, again the neck will get bent forward ok. So, you do not want to have a neck forward like this you know, you want to have a neck backward. So, the way you hold it you want to kind of see there is there are two bones over here ok. So, you want to basically uh, mastoid bones they are called. So, you basically touch or hold on the mastoid bone and then put your fingers just around it not not on the back back of the head ok. And then you kind of bring the baby uh, near to nose, so near to nose why neck to nose? So, that your your neck is bent forward. If you bring nose to nipple what happens? Basically your uh, you know your your uh, head would be straight you know your neck would be straight you want to bend it a little bit backward ok. So, you bring the neck uh, baby a little bit downward. So, that way when I open the mouth that is when the lower part of the relic go in the mouth. I will again discuss it uh, why that near to nipple is very important because that is called landing of the baby ok. All right. Third point you keep the baby so close to the mother ok. You tell mother that keep the baby's uh, kind of chest close to mother's chest because if baby is close to mother's chest it will be so much easier for baby to latch on well because if baby is too far like you know for example, if the neck is twisted then what will happen the, the, the chest is facing up it should not be facing up it should be facing the mother ok. So, baby should be extremely close to the mother ok and this is how basically baby will come. Now, the fourth point of positioning is nose to nipple. Now, that is also again WHO uh, point very very important nose to nipple, but when you bring the baby to the nipple you want to make sure that uh, nose is kind of it is near to nipple ok. Now, what is this near to nipple? Near to nipple is uh, what you can do is suppose for example, you are bringing the baby to the breast ok to the nipple then the, the nose the nair of the nose is facing the uh, nipple ok. So, that is very important I will talk about it later why it is important. So, here for example, I am going to show you again ok. So, in this position baby's neck is extended ok and baby is facing the breast directly ok. Baby is not facing up like this make sure that baby's face is not looking at the mother. Again when we are eating food we always look at the uh, uh, you know the, the dish we do not look up 
right? Do we look up when we eat? We always look in, in the plate. So, mother's baby's plate is mother's breast. So, let baby look directly at the uh, breast, okay? And then you uh, look you ask but the baby to look up not you can't ask my baby but just basically what you want to do is you uh, lift up baby's neck backward now why why is it important to lift up the baby a little bit backward does anybody uh, i'm going to explain to you why it is important to kind of uh, lift baby's neck backward this is because what happens is while you're drinking water, okay. So when you drink water, remember that we always kind of lift up our neck a little bit and then drink water, right? So if you have a bottle, you always kind of lift up your neck and then drink water, right? When we, if we have water and if we kind of say put our head forward, we will not be able to swallow. This is really, really important, okay? Because if we, if we don't do that, you know, we will be able to, uh, you know, if we don't. Uh, extend our neck, then we will not be able to swallow. Similarly, when you are bringing the baby to breastfeed, it is important that we extend the neck backward, okay. So, here it is extend the neck backward, okay and this is how it should be, do you see? And make sure that the nair of the nose is in the line of nipple. If it goes too high up, like if it is coming too high up like this, what will happen? Then baby will have to bend forward okay to breastfeed. So, you do not bring the baby too high up, bring it baby a little bit lower, the baby had to extend her neck, okay. So, in this position, you pull the baby's leg a little bit downwards, you know, towards the other side, okay. So, the baby will be able to extend the neck or you will have to help baby to extend the neck and then to reach out, basically baby will uh, kind of latch on, okay. So, this was the uh, two, uh, two parts that we talked about, first part was mother's, uh, you know, uh, position or mother's readiness, second thing is baby's position. So, this is where we complete our, you know, first part of how to uh, position the baby to the breast, okay. Thank you so much.